guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Amra. I hope that you will enjoy the content of my channel and will stick around. Also guys, if you like this video, make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Today I have a brilliant lady with me from Rabat, Morocco. Dr. Hin Boya is a professor, an international speaker, and the author of the inspirational book, African Girl, African Woman. So let's go talk to her about her book. Hi, Hind, how are you? Hi, Amira, so nice to join you. Thank you for inviting me. Today, we're here to talk to you about your book, obviously, but before we do that, I'd love for you to talk to us about your childhood, about your educational background, and about your exposure to so many different countries, which probably has helped you writing this book. Right, true, true. So I, um, I grew up in Casablanca, Morocco, and then I started my training as an engineer. So I have a, an engineering degree from Ecole Centrale Paris, one of the French engineering school. I was majoring in industrial engineering and then I went on to get my PhD from Harvard on environmental engineering. So I, uh, I left home quite early and it was quite unusual for uh, girls in our time to actually be able to leave and carry on studying. Um, but uh, when I got to Harvard and to the US, uh, it was just an opening of a new world. And uh, so I stayed on and I had my first uh, professional experience at the World Bank as a young professional, as an official working on uh, economic development projects, on environmental projects. And uh, as you mentioned, I, I love traveling. So I chose uh, very different regions. I started by working on Latin America, and it was nice to discover Argentina, Brazil. You know, I was a young lady, and it was just fascinating to go and look at all those cultures and those countries as we were working on defining environmental strategies for them. And, uh, you know, as a young professional, when you join the bank, that way you are able to rotate uh, in, and have experiences in different regions. So after that, I went on and I worked on Southeast Asia. Uh, on uh, poverty in Laos. Uh, I looked at some of the projects in Thailand and uh, Malaysia, went to Vietnam. So it was just amazing uh, to be able Sounds to look at. Amazing. It is nice. Uh, and, that, and after that, it was time for me to come back to Morocco and uh, to contribute to the way strategies are elaborated and uh, feel that you know I can be part of the development movement and uh, the growth of my own country. So I came back to Morocco after mm -hmm. a few years, after eight years at the World Bank and, uh, and voila. So I've been here now for some time. <laughs> Before we go on and talk about your book, I just wanna show a short clip to people about the book. So let's go see that. To girls, do not just lean in, stand up, express yourself, create, study hard, take your work seriously, but never forget how to laugh. And to women, you are not alone. You stand on the shoulders of countless women before you, all who have done and are still accomplishing amazing things. They teach, they quote, they launch startups, they finance new ventures, run multinational corporations, lead governments, Learn from these role models, from these leaders, and you will become one who will inspire the new generation. First, I want to know what inspired you, Hint? What inspired you to write this book? Yeah, many things inspired me. I think this book was in the making all those years. You know, um, being a woman in a very male dominated world has always been, has always made me feel different and made me feel you, I need to work harder. I need to uh, be more uh, serious, more productive, more present, um, stay on, uh, do more work and take on more responsibilities. And, um, and in that particular moment where I decided to write it, it was after, 
you know, uh, when I came back to Morocco, um, I hadn't uh, finished you the story, but I joined the prime minister's office and then um, I joined another sovereign fund. And after having some experience in the public sector, I went on and discovered uh, how, what is it to be an entrepreneur? So I, I launched my own company companies. Um, I had one on advisory, but I also had one which structures and manage funds. And some of the struggles that I was faced about investors, how investors are expecting high return and expecting it right away. And then you have startups that making a lot of pressure to get the funding. And so, you know, and I, I said, you know, when you're a woman, you just have to have this inner power or an extra power that I don't even know where you get it from. And having girls myself, I came home for very, uh, you know, uh, always very stressful days at work. And I said, you know, I would like to give them a guidelines or a guide or a roadmap on how to keep on believing and keep on strengthening themselves no matter what happened, no matter how much stress you can have, how much struggles, how much challenges you are facing, you need to find a strength somehow to carry on, to persevere. And it's, you know, and it's all about how to express that resilience. So I wrote the book really from my heart and it was during COVID time where we were all locked down and I said, let me speak to all the young girls and young women. And that's how it came about. <laughs> and it's a brilliant, brilliant book. And I could go on talking about it all day, but um, <laughs> I have actually, you know, because of time constraints, I took um, some excerpts from the book and I would like to uh, read those out and discuss them with you. And guys, you will get to see them on the screen. So um, the first one I have is where you talk about, um, here's what you say. The continent continues to become the center of the world's interest. It is the focal point of the SDGs to increase economic growth, to ensure social and political stability, to use and protect natural resources in ways that build resilience to fast changing climate. By investing in Africa, the world reveals its quest in the African woman. Yet, there is a gross imbalance in terms of finance. While she represents more than half the population, she receives only a fraction of the funding granted to men. This makes little sense. After all, the small portion of women who do receive capital reinvest almost all, 90%, of it back into the community through education, health, and food, more than twice of what men reinvest, which is 40%, right? So Absolutely. now my question is, why do you think that is? Is it because not enough women come forward to ask for their share in funding? Or is it because women are seen as not so capable and only uh, a select few are getting funding because there is a certain quota that needs to be fulfilled. What do you, what do you say about that? Yeah, this is exactly the heart of the problem uh, today, but I don't, I do believe that women have all the bright ideas about creating their own companies and being entrepreneurs. And what's missing is that phase where they translate that idea into a real project that can be attractive to investors, attractive to financiers. And that's why throughout the book, what I am talking about is the importance of getting the skills necessary uh, th that allows them to develop their projects, to m go from an idea to something concrete, to something real. So that phase, we need to care to to help women and uh, assist them into creating their companies and their enterprises. And I think women are brilliant, multitask, and have the amazing capacity to manage. And we've seen that statistically. I mean, if you think about microfinance, microfinance have been most successful with women. So I don't think people mistrust them, mistrust their judgment. But I think what is happening here is that 
they are not ready to be out there to be compared to the other projects that get financed. And that's what we need to do. We need to empower women to not only have the confidence in them that they can do it, but actually have the capacity to build, uh, to translate their idea into a real business plan, into a real project, into numbers. And so that's what's lacking. And uh, we see some initiatives, and I talk about them in the book that now are happening, but we need more of that because unfortunately, um, the percentage of investment that goes to women is way below 1%. And um, if you were to stimulate growth um, in merely now post the sanitary crisis, you really need to have women in the balance and you need them part of that movement. So you need them ready to be able to attract and absorb that finance and uh, and do right good return on it. Um, right. So what we're saying is that basically uh, there aren't they don't have the solid proposals ready to present to get the funding, right? And the meeting is required to get them to learn how to write those proposals or to you know, translate their ideas into something solid that can be presented. Yeah. And then, of course, you have all those brilliant ladies because now women are are studying, they go into, you know, they have their great degrees and they have nice projects. But if they don't have any other women, men tends to be more comfortable uh, investing in men. And that's why uh, some of the financier and economists are encouraging more women to become partners in the investment funds, to become part of the decision making table where they decide where the money will be going. In. So, and that's the other side. So you really, the story is, uh, is very big and very large and you have so much to tackle. You have to tackle when they lack knowledge and then you have also to empower them when they actually have all the skills and have the best projects and they just need that little push to say, you know, uh, you mentioned quota. So quota is one of the, um, the uh, methods that are used, but we need more than quota because if you think about it, they are as smart, as brilliant, as Absolutely. bright as any other man. They can Absolutely. code, they can do anything and we need to push them forward. Absolutely, I totally agree. You just mentioned that uh, men are more comfortable funding men. Uh, and that is a very interesting thing and it's very true. But why do you think that is? Why, why do you think they feel that way? Is it because they, they feel like, women you know, aren't capable enough or, or what is it? Well, not really. I mean, it's a men's club. I think we can talk about Silicon Valley, for example. I mean, there are today some great women role models, but there are really few, very few, very few women that manage to go into this men's club. So that mentality of it being a man's club, is just, um, it's not that we need it to change. We just need to show that women have a place there. And so we need to push more women into that. And I mean, I think I, I have a very positive and uh, um, outlook uh, in, throughout the book because I, I do see a lot of uh, funds being funded today with women, a lot of women launching initiatives to invest in women. And uh, so these type of movements will carry on and will have more men uh, looking into investing into women because numbers have actually shown that companies seems to be better managed when they are led by a woman. And, and even the return on investment is actually met better when it is uh, coming from a woman. So, and that's good because that means that we have all the numbers in our side. So, now what we need is just to build the confidence. So it's almost we need to whoever have that strength and that positive energy to lend it to all the women and inspire them and get them believe in their goals and their dreams and that Absolutely. they can have, you know, uh, multinational companies. They can aim to have unicorn startups, unicorn meaning reaching the one billion dollar level. And so uh, I think we need more of these initiatives that you, such as the one you do in Amir, to have women listen to us and, you know, and tell them that, you know, dream big and we know you can make it. And if you miss and lacking the skills, get the skills, get them, get the, uh, the knowledge, get the training. And I think that, you know, since we're talking about the men's club, maybe 
if you have more women in decision-making positions, uh, it's going to be better for women and maybe more women will end up getting funding. Maybe there's going to be more of a balance. I mean, we're not trying to take anything away from men when we say no. that we want women to uh, do better, uh, but there should be some sort of a balance. It should Absolutely. Be something in I, we believe in abundance. We believe uh, that there is space for everyone. Absolutely. And in that space, there is a space for women in the decision table. It's not taking anyone's place. And, uh, and the, we see more women now in ministerial positions. We see more women in boards uh, of uh, large institutions, large banks, uh, and we see more women leading uh, the financial world. And I think that's this trend should carry on and should be stimulated. That's great, and, uh, yeah, which is great, which is great. Okay, so let's go on to the next excerpt that I chose. Much of this book focuses on educating girls and empowering women through technology. And in no continent have women been more excluded from learning and using technology than Africa. If women are allowed access to a computer, her attention is too often restricted to YouTube or Netflix rather than learning to take it apart, program it, harness its capacity, use it to build things, innovate, create products and services that meet her evolving needs rather than simply entertain her. So are we saying that there is a need to change the female mindset? Doesn't it have to do with the way we are raising our girls and are we providing them with the right tools to dream big and aim for big goals? Yes, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, it was a little bit provocative, right? When I said that they go into Netflix and YouTube, but when you think about it, when, you know, I have girls and I have my boy, and if I compare them, you look at girls and they keep on dreaming about a mermaid, about unicorns, you know, they're 10, 11, 12, and they stream dream about it. While the boy, he knows that Flush McQueen and Spider-Man, all those are not real. So they like that, you know, to carry on in dreaming, in feeling romance and feeling the beauty of things. And so that state of mind keep on uh, formatting the way they think and the way they behave afterwards. And that's why I am really a strong believer of the importance of preparing the young children way before six, six years old to feel that they can build, they can play with dolls, they can dress them, but they can also uh, construct and they can also play with cars and they can also understand how a plane works. And so, and we see more of this uh, engineering little engineering tools that are provided in a pink purple color so that they appeal more to girls and 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 my so my message throughout the book is to get your girls to think as well get your girls to be prepared to do calculus to be prepared to be scientific to be prepared to be creative not creative in a, in a you know beautiful way colors and we need that but we also need um, creative in building, in constructing, in the hard, uh, the hard uh, um, roles and materials. And, uh, and so when they do that, then when they have a computer, they will say, oh, how does this computer uh, function? What is inside the computer? And this is what we want. We want girls to be curious, to be to be to to be provocative, to be an, uh, you know um, curious about what the professor and the teachers are teaching them, and to know that the basics of a better life and being an entrepreneur and a leader is to be scientifically minded, to learn calculus, to have you know the technology uh, to and to use that, uh, and it's not boring. It's not unfashionable to be uh, to love math or to like technology. So that's my. Um, you know, this is really what I want this book to uh, to tell girls that, hey, girls, you can love being princess. You can also aim to be a pilot and aim to be a CEO and aim to be whatever really you want. You can do both and you can still be beautiful and glamorous and also tough as, a, a, you know, decision maker and entrepreneur. <laughs> so that's, Absolutely. Yeah. that's that's a beautiful message and the essence of this book. You talk about your own journey in your book. Yeah. 
And uh, you say, I grew up hiding my love of math concealing my interest in doing the exercises so that I could stay up and complete them later, after dark, when my mother thought I was sleeping like a good girl. Yeah. And, you know, that's amazing to me because you went on to study engineering in Paris, and then you went on to get your MS and your PhD at Harvard. I want you to tell us a little more about how that came about when you were when you were actually hiding you know your math exercises yeah but because it's really true you know I mean I grew up in the 80s right uh, uh 70s and 80s and uh, uh at the time you know you got to get married and find the right person by 18 probably 19 20 and so my the objective the main objective for young girls and young women is to be just the perfect wife and to know everything around the house and to know how to do it so it's really it was very hard to convince parents to let me go study abroad or to carry on and push in my studies and and think about the career as my main objective and um so i really did <laughs> did wake up in the middle of the night and and studied in the corridor outside my room and it's funny how that image stayed on because in reality, we keep on doing that. We keep on hiding things because you don't want to over impress the other person or having reactions saying she's too excited to, you know, doing too many things. And we keep on having that attitude even later on. So anyway, my only way out was really to be at top of my class or top of, you know, everything. Uh, because I knew if I was so excellent, they will not, um, they, they will let me carry on and go on and have and, and reach, uh, you know, universities, uh, Ivy Leagues and uh, uh, very, com very competitive schools. And that would happen. I got accepted into this engineering school in Paris where only two or three of us from Morocco were accepted. So it's very selective. And then I had my professors, two professors of math and physics, and uh, also the dean of the school who came to actually uh, convince my parents that they should not stop from uh, letting their daughter have a better future or, you know, have a chance in her life. And, uh, and it, it worked. <laughs> Luckily, <laughs> it really, yeah, <laughs> it worked. And it was in September. So imagine I had the whole summer waiting to see what's gonna happen. And they like, no, you don't go. I wanted to go, but at the same time, I didn't wanna deceive them. It was just, it's hard. We go through very complex uh, decisions and very complex uh, choices between the tradition that, you know, drags you and pull you back and brings you back. And then you wanna grow, you wanna be modern, you wanna be like anybody else. And uh, and so so I did and I, push the board, the, you know, the ceilings. And I went on, went to France. And then my sister, my other sister, who were uh, two years younger than me, followed my path, which is great. And then I, and then when I got to Paris, I'm like, hmm, I think I want to do something else. So same thing, worked hard, had to be the top of my class. And that's how I went to Harvard. And, you know, when you get to Harvard, they won't tell you, no, you don't want, you don't go there. So that was an easy name to accept for them. And, and that's how I went on. Uh, so, so, uh, it's, so what I wanted to uh, express and share with you is that how much struggles we go through as a woman, but you still have to appear calm and comfortable and make everything looks easy. And that looking easy is something that we learn from our culture and from wanting to please everyone, to make everyone happy around you. It's okay, it's just that sometimes you don't, need, you don't have to forget yourself uh, as you carry on in that path. <laughs> So yeah, the you can do both. You can do both. Yes, I dedicated the book to my daughters and my nieces. And, and I said to all the African girls and any girls, in fact, in the world, Asian, Latin American, anywhere, uh, who on dark nights look up at the sky, gaze at the bright stars and make a wish. And we all, one night, just be being with ourselves and 
we just had something so beautiful we wanted to achieve that and make it and wish. And the idea is to hang on and to hold on to that wish and to that goal. That is, because- that is beautiful. One of the things that you just said, uh, the message that we as women also need to understand that we have to we have to work hard to become something. We have to have certain goals. We have to have certain objectives in life, which we want to fulfill because nobody is going to come and do that for us. We just, mm-hmm. we have to dream big. We have to do our part and then expect from, from others to help us out. You know, and also where we were talking in the beginning about um, the projects Uh, to have actual solid proposals to hand in for funding. I think it's really important to realize that we have to get out there. We, as women, also have to work hard to get out there, learn how to create those proposals and learn how to get the money, learn Mm -hmm. the procedures. It's one thing to expect the world to give back to us, but then... What are we doing to achieve something? And there is a lot of work to be done by women themselves. We do encourage the environment to be um, friendly for them and to encourage them and to help them and to hold their hands, but they need also to work towards that. Uh, of course, there is the part that comes to the parents where the parents have the responsibilities for their daughters in the beginning to uh, educate them, to uh, treat them just like any other, any boy. But after that, it's the responsibility is on the young girl and the young woman to be serious, to focus, to really want to do something about her life and 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 um, give, give give the time for it. I mean, really work for it, uh, learn, um, study hard, be creative. Uh, I mean, okay, we want her to laugh. She needs to be happy. She needs, but in the same time, she also needs to be serious about things. Yeah. Right, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is a brilliant book. And I would encourage all of you to go out there and get your copy from Amazon. I'm going to list and link everything in the description box below. This is an absolute must read. And I'm also going to link uh, Dr. Boya's social media links and other articles that you can read. Thank you so much, Hin. Thank you so much for being here. It was a pleasure talking to you. And I hope to see you again on my channel for something. Absolutely. And I hope to see you in Morocco. Absolutely. (laughs) Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.